let's just say really quick, you want to dial a 16th delay. Your bottom button is if the delay hits and then feeds back into itself and keeps coming through the loop. So right here, uh, record level is basically how much drive you would have coming through the tape machine because, you know, like the Echoplex, they figured out that the preamp in the Echoplex really worked as a good boost for a guitar pedal or for a guitar in general. So that's kind of what this knob right here is, record level. So I like keeping it low so you don't distort the delays. Uh, the mechanics and wear is basically how much tape and machine wear you have the influences wave and flutter and stuff. I like keeping them where there's a subtle amount in, but not too much. The low cut is so you don't have too much bass waves stacking on top of each other and making your delay sound way too thick. Um, which you could dial it where there's none, or you could dial it where it cuts most of the bass out. Then obviously repeats how many times it feeds back into itself. Echo level is basically your mix of the delay, and then you have the spring reverb and then the spacing. I like keeping spacing at even, that way the tap is true to the tempo you're playing versus these more strategic, like triplet I could see being useful, but I just keep it at even. But there's golden ratio and silver ratio as well and anywhere in between. Like I said, I like keeping it even. So right now I have it on a 16th. Um, let's just see where I'm landing right now. Here, let's go ahead and put in more repeats and we'll mix it a little hot so you can actually hear it. Get that. Tapped in correctly. Okay, let's go to an eighth. And then let's go to a dotted eighth. Then let's do the quarter. So there you go, just a couple examples. But then you could also make more extravagant delay types, like where it kind of goes all over the place. Let's add that dotted eighth in there. See, it gets like really wild. And then you can also hold these buttons and that yellow is a 50% delay. So it has less, half the volume output as this top delay there. And let's say you just want a, let's say you want a dotted eighth on top of your quarter delay, but you don't want it to be as loud. You kind of add that into the mix. Now, the delays will pick up the, imagine you hit your guitar note here in the timeline and it goes through all these different delay types for how far back they're spaced from your initial dry signal. And what it does is it hits that dotted eighth right here and then it hits that quarter here and then it goes into the feedback and it hits this feedback loop and repeats those where if we put a dotted eighth feedback loop, it's going to do these repeats based on the dotted eighth feedback loop. Hopefully that makes sense. So you can hear that delay hit the first time on quarter notes. And then the second time through, it speeds up. Let's speed it up even more. And then last but not least, even faster. And then let's say you didn't want any feedbacks. You could just run just these two delays one time hit. So that just gives you a quick nutshell. This is basically how I would run it 
90% of the time. My favorite setting is definitely the tape, which right now it's saying that this uh, preset that I'm running is a studio one, but let's go ahead and put it in tape. Not really much of a difference. There is differences when you really crank these things, but I would say there's minimal changes between tape, studio, and drum when these things are down. So really quick, let's just show you what it sounds like if it's a little bit worn. Hear how it's starting to distort? No, no, no. And there's some warble if you hold a note. I like a more subtle amount. Let's do 50 percentile, roughly. Just adds a little bit of a flutter to it. And then if we took the spring out, you'd notice there's less blur and gluing the, no the, the repeats together. Or if you go to more spring, the more it kind of merges the two, the delay hits together. And you can actually take this spring and in a secondary function, you can turn the spring's decay up or down, I want to say. And this is basically just the level is this face value knob. But you could actually even change how, like on, let's use the flint for an example. Which you probably understand how a delay works. So right now, basically my decay knob is controlled by these two knobs it changes the decay on the fly to this setting and that setting. So here's two examples. Little bit of decay with a slight tail. A lot of decay with a very long tail, which is basically wide open almost decay. And then you hear when I swap over, it quickly grabs that and pulls it down to the less decay. I think this is good right here. I went a little long. I'm probably gonna upload it to YouTube for a lot of other people to experience this over the course of time. But that's a crash course on how I use the Volante and what you can do with it. You can also do some panning stuff, but that's more depth. Let's just stick with that for an entry level basis of learning the Volante.